Hi everybody, it's Andrea and welcome back. So I haven't been filming this week because Jennifer's been a bit sick and I've not been feeling myself either. I wanted to show you the books I'm hoping to read in May. So although we're through uh, a week through May, I am still going to show you what I'm hoping to read. So I've got some non-fiction and I've got some fiction. Now these are uh, physical books, not uh, Kindle ebooks or ebooks because I read those anyway and I don't plan those. They're just things that I... Uh, read every now and again. So we'll start with the non-fiction. So as you know I'm doing a reread of my Marilyn book collection slowly so I've pulled another one off the shelf and this is 40 Days with Marilyn by Han Jorgen Lemborn. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Again this book says um, she says, I wouldn't mind if you wrote about me sometime. You're welcome to tell it all sometime, but not until after I'm dead. On the first day, she didn't keep their appointment. On the fourth day, they finally met. On the tenth day, they become lovers. Yes, it's one of those books. There was a plethora of these in the 70s and 80s. It's taken Hans Jorgen and Bourne nearly 20 years to bring himself to write the story of his passionate yet tragic love affair with Marilyn Monroe. Their love stripped bare the glitter and the pretense to reveal the true Marilyn. Her attitude to men, career, drinking and drug taking. Candid, compelling and moving, 40 Days with Marilyn is a tender story of a very special love and the intimate portrait of a very special woman. Now, I don't know if they even met. I mean, I don't know who he is, but it's, a, it's just one of those stories that you take with a very, very large print of print pinch of salt. Um, so that's the one I'm going to try and read this month and then if I do get this one I'll pull the next one out and start that and I'll show you uh, that in June's TBR if I haven't finished it. Another book I want to read um, is another, this one is a biography, or autobiography and this is uh, Julie Andrews' second volume in her life story. Um, I haven't got the first one but this is Homework, a memoir of my Hollywood, Hollywood years, Julie Andrews with Emma Walton Hamilton. So there's that fab picture there and this gorgeous picture there. Uh, Homework is the second installment of Julie Andrews' memoirs, beginning with her arrival in Hollywood to make her screen debut in Walt Disney's Mary Poppins, followed closely by The Sound of Music. The result in this astonishing rise to fame as though no cl now classic films brought Julie almost overnight success. It was the beginning of a career that would make her an icon to millions the world over. With her trademark charm and candour, Julie reveals behind the scenes details and reflections on her impressive body of work. From the incredible highs to the challenging lows, not only does she share her professional experience and collaborations with giants of cinema and television, she also unveils her personal story of adjusting to a new and often daunting world, dealing with unimaginable public scrutiny, being a new mother, moving on from her first marriage, embracing two stepchildren, adopting two more children and falling in love with the brilliant and mercurial Blake Edwards. The pair worked together in numerous films including Ten, S.O.B and Victor Victoria, the gender-bending comedy that garnered multiple Oscar nominations. I remember seeing that when I was a youngster, I loved it. In her first memoir, memoir Home, an international bestseller, Julie recounted her difficult childhood and her emergence as an acclaimed singer and performer on the stage. In Homework, she takes us on a rare and intimate journey into the next chapter of her remarkable life story that is funny, heart-rending and inspiring. So, my brother gave me this one for Christmas, so I'm looking forward to reading that and I will have to get a copy of the first instalment to read as well. I do like memoirs and biographies and autobiographies of famous movie stars. And I love Julie Andrews. Who doesn't love a bit of Julie Andrews? The third one is um, the story of uh, the story of the wreck of the Titanic, the ocean's greatest disaster, 1912 Memorial Edition. So this, basically, this edition came out. I'm not sure when it was actually. Uh, well, it says 1998, but this was first published in 1912, um, and basically, it's one of the very first published accounts of the sinking of Titanic and it says April 14, 1912, just before midnight, the cold waters of the North Atlantic were pushed aside by the mighty bow of the new luxury liner SS Titanic. Suddenly the passengers feel feel a slight jarring sensation. Within hours the greatest ship ever conceived by man seeks into the deep with a loss of 1,595 of her 2,340 passengers and crew. In this graphic and thrilling account of the demise of the, this behemoth of the seas, one of the first ever published as a book, 
The true story of the Titanic's demise and the tales of her survivors are told with a chilling immediacy that is breathtaking. With this one horrible event, man's faith in his ability to harness technology to beat the elements of nature came crumbling down. No longer would captains plough through the night at full speed in an iceberg in iceberg filled waters. No longer we would, be, would we believe we could conquer the unconquerable. Not only was this the maiden voyage of a great ship, it was a social event as well. The cream of society of two continents was aboard they perished along with sailors women children and imp can i can't say that impecunious steerage passenger full speed ahead had meant death and devastation here you will find the thrilling Sorry, the heart-rending personal stories of the survivors, as well as the dramatic story of the building of the Titanic, the problems of early wireless tele telegraphy, the terror of icebergs, and the vanity and arrogance of the owners and captain that led to the greatest seafaring disasters of all time. Illustrated with original drawings and photographs, this book is an historic keynote for all who follow. There we go. Now, up the road to me is a place called Gathley Gross, Gathley Gross Mill, and in fact the... Um, CQD or SOS from Titanic, the, the distress call, was actually picked up on the radio there. One of the first places to pick it up. The next one on my list of non-fiction, and the last one for now, although obviously if I get through the majority of this book and I want to read another non-fiction, I will jump in it. And it's a Jack the Ripper book. It's Jack the Ripper and Masked. The real identity of the world's most infamous killer is revealed at last by William Beadle. I believe that though. Would you believe that? Mm -mm. Modern profiling provides the tools to identify Jack the Ripper. An American study of 36 sexually motivated killers found that 86% came from stable economic backgrounds and that 80% of the offenders possessed average or above average intelligence. But every killer experienced a significantly malfunctioned family unit during childhood. Failings included alcohol or drug abuse, sexual difficulties, insanity and criminal behaviour. If the FBI had been hunting Jack the Ripper, they would have referred to him simply as unsub, meaning unknown subject, the agency standard for term for an unnamed offender. We need to trawl the profiles deeper and darker waters to pinpoint a genuine suspect. We're looking for somebody who is mentally ill, but not noticeably so, who knows that what he is doing is wrong, but needs to do it, and is capable of functioning routinely in society from day to day without ever having properly integrated into it. So I don't know who the suspect is in this book but uh i'm pretty sure i'm gonna find out in june in may no not june i'm wishing my life away it's my birthday in june so who knows on to the fiction so i've got a book here that i got from ebay it's a folio society so they do come slipcase but i've taken it off to show you this beautiful jacket uh, they're naked hardcovers. Steve Donahue showed a few of these quite recently. And this is Thomas Hardy's Return of the Natives. Now, I love Thomas Hardy. I have for such a long time. And The Mayor of Casterbridge is one of my favourite books. Don't ask me why. <laughs> it's not a great subject. He sells his wife. But then he does redeem himself, his wife and his daughter. But he redeems himself um, through the years as he regrets his actions. So, I don't know if there's a... This has got a, a, a library sticker in it from uh, somebody else's collection, which is fine. I don't know if it tells me anything about it in here. It just goes straight into it. So I don't really know anything about it because these, like I said, these books don't give you an overview. But Thomas Hardy's Return of the Native um, is next on my list. Actually, I think it does mention something about it. Somebody coming home. Well, there's the offer. No. Does it, I think it does, but it's too long to read out. So there's that one. One of the books, actually there's two and I've, I haven't picked one up, uh, off my, I I picked it up now, um, shelf of unread TBR books, which is over there and there's probably about 100, 150 books up there. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm not buying physical books unless it's something I am going to keep is 20 Girl, 20s Girl by Sophie Kinsella. I do like Sophie Kinsella, they're easy reads and I haven't read this one yet. So, Lara has always had an overactive imagination. Now she wonders if she's losing her mind. Perfectly normal 20-something girls just don't get visited by ghosts. Oh, this is my kind of book. But inexplicably, the spirit of Lara's great aunt Sadie, in the form of a bold, demanding Charleston dancing girl, has appeared to make one last request. Lara must track down a missing necklace Sadie simply can't rest without. 
Lara's got enough problems on her own, her startup company is floundering, her best friend and business partner has run off to Goa and she's just been dumped by the love of her life. But as Lara spends more time with Sadie, life becomes more glamorous and their treasure hunt turns into something intriguing and romantic. Could Sadie's ghost be the answer to Laura's problems and can two girls from different times end up learning something special from each other? Now this is a kind of book I like so I'm going to enjoy this one and I can't believe I've put it off for so long. Probably because I never read the back, I just picked it up because it's Sophie Kinsella. And I do believe I got it from the Tesco bookshelf, which they stopped doing for a while, but due to popular demand, it's coming back. Yay! So they've been asking for book donations. Uh, next one is Peter James. I love Peter James. Um, he writes um, police procedurals. This is one of them. And he also writes ghost stories, although I don't think he's done a ghost story for a while. I love his ghost stories. Always supernatural stuff. But this is Dead Man's Footsteps featuring uh, DS. I Grace, so De Detective Superintendent Roy Grace recently turned into a TV series starring John Sim as Grace and I haven't watched it which is annoying I must try and watch it at some point I will at some point probably when it's repeated so I think this is book four or five in the Grace series and I've read lots of the yeah this is number four uh, some of the, the later ones and I used to get them every month every year for my birthday the new one I missed last year's and the new one's off next month next week so I might have to order last year's so, amid the tragic unfolding mayhem of the morning of 9-11, failed Brighton businessman and ne'er-do-well Ronnie Wilson sees the chance of a lifetime to shed his debts, disappear and reinvent himself in another country. Six years later, the discovery of the skeletal remains of a woman's body in a storm drain in Brighton leads Detective Superintendent Roy Grace on an inquiry spanning the globe and into a desperate race against time to save the life of a woman being hunted down like an animal in the streets and alleys of Brighton. Now I've already read a good chunk of this, I'm probably on about, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've read a good chunk of this already. So this one I've actually started. I do love these books, they're great, the covers are always really interesting as well. And the hardbacks, unfortunately this is a paperback, they line up ever so beautifully on the shelf because this is one of the authors I do keep so if I can get a hardback of this I will I, I do buy them when I, when I come across them in charity shops uh, I, sh I have a list of the, the novels by Peter James I have and then if I find a hardback I will buy it uh, there are only three more to go this is what I want to read I'm probably not going to get rid of half of this uh, again I'm rereading Terry Pratchett's um, Discworld collection so the next one is The Light Fantastic which is the sequel to The Colour of Magic which I read last month. My favourite is Moving Pictures but it's a long way off. So in this one, Great Atun, the star turtle or Tewin, who supports the weight of the Discworld, labours through the galactic night, the only creature in the entire universe that knows exactly where it's going. Philophus I can't say it. philosophers have debated where this is and they are due to find out in about two months and then they're really going to worry. As it moves towards a seemingly inevitable collision with a male malevolent red star the Discworld has only one possible saviour. Unfortunately this happens to be the singularly inept and cowardly wiz wizard called Rincewind or Rincewind however you pronounce it who was last seen falling off the edge of the world. Need I say more? Last two are both Stephen King's. So, the Stephen King readathon hosted by Missy the Binge Reader moves into May, and May's book is The Institute. <coughs> I just need to have a quick drink of water before I carry on. I am up to date with them all. I have read all the ones so far that are on the list. Yay, me! And so, this is this next one. And one extra. Uh, Lou Sellitz is a super smart 12 year old with an exceptional gift and is the latest in a long line of kids abducted and taken to a secret government facility hidden deep in the forest in Maine. Here kids, this, this does sound a little bit like Firestarter at the start of it. Here kids with special talents, telekinesis and telepathy like Luke's new friends Kalisha, Nick and Iris are subject to a series of experiments. There seems to be no hope of escape until Luke teams up with an even younger boy whose powers of telepathy are off the scale. Meanwhile, far away in the small town in South Carolina, former cop Jim Jameson, Tim Jameson, sorry, is looking for a quiet life, has taken a job working for the local sheriff. He doesn't know he's about to take on the biggest case of his career. So, looking forward to that. I do love my monthly Stephen King. And finally, the last book in the Backerman books. So I've read the first two. You'll see what I think about the second book, which is Roadwork, 
in my wrap up which you'll be seeing this straight after this one pretty much <clears throat> And the third one is a story I really love. I love the movie, so I'm interested to see how it compares. So I'm going to read the book and then watch the movie. And that is The Running Man. So it uh, starred Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 80s. I love it. It wasn't a very high rated film, but then adaptations very rarely are. Shawshank and Green Mile are, are the exceptions to the rule, I believe. The Running Man. Very, very short synopsis because obviously it's got three on them. TV's future favourite game show where contestants are hunted to death in the attempt to win a one billion dollar jackpot basically so if you've seen The Running Man you know the premise I'm really looking forward to getting on to this one but this will be the one I read at the end when I've, if I've read everything else because it's not one that I need to finish I need to read but I do want to read it but uh, obviously I've got one Stephen King I have to read this month well I don't have to but I'm going to and I've got a lot of other stuff I want to read as well but those are the physical books I'm hoping to read in the month of May um they're falling off I tried to make it tidy so they wouldn't but they are so yeah they're the ones I'm tr going to try and read in May I hope I can do it I mean I don't know um yeah I'll do an update on how I'm doing reading wise in the finished books in my wrap up um, but yeah, I'll see you in the wrap up very, very shortly. I hope you've enjoyed this. Have you read any of the books I plan on reading? And if so, what do you think of them? Let me know down in the comments below and I will see you very soon. Bye guys.